Hi, my name is Tom Jensen. Welcome to this special instructional video on creating tissue arrays. This video is designed for those who desire to create consistent and beautiful tissue arrays. After you have viewed this video, you will have a clear understanding of how to organize, punch, and section an array block. When you begin to create your first array, remember that anything that requires a new skill takes some practice and patience. Your first five or even twenty punches might not be as successful as you had hoped. But that's all right. With practice, you will develop the skills needed to create accurate tissue arrays. You may find it necessary to watch some of the segments in this video one or two more times to get a clear understanding of a particular topic. And as you apply these techniques, you will find that you too can master the tissue array. So sit back, watch this video, and take some notes. And then practice. Practice what you've learned here. The arrayer from Beecher Instruments consists of a turret which is used for both punching and switching between the two needles. A pair or set of needles, one for punching the recipient or array block and the other for punching the donor blocks. There are two size needles available from Beecher Instruments, the two millimeter and the 0.6 millimeter needles. A 1 millimeter and a 1.5 millimeter needle is also available from Beecher Instruments. The adjustment knobs keep the array punches in precise even rows. The array block holder is where the blank recipient block or array block is secured to the arrayer. The donor block bridge is designed to fit over the array block holder for easy punching of donor tissues. The depth stop is used to adjust how deep the needle goes into the array block. There are two ways to adjust a needle, front to back and right to left. The front to back adjustment screw is in the small hole between the main screws on the front of the needle holder. And the adjustment screw for right to left movement is on each side of the turret. To begin adjustment, you will need to find out which way the needles are off. To do this, punch the recipient needle into a blank paraffin block. Switch to turret and lower the donor needle close to the hole. This donor needle needs to move to the left, so the adjustment screw behind the turret on the donor side is the correct one. Turn the screw until the needle lines up to the recipient hole. Before turning the needle adjustment screws, first loosen the two Phillips screws. This loosens the needle assembly so the needles can be adjusted.
With the proper hex wrench, turn the small screw located between the needle screws. This adjustment moves the entire needle assembly away from the turret. After the needles are adjusted, remember to tighten all screws before punching. To test how well your adjustments went, place the test punch into the recipient hole. Before punching an array, it is important to organize donor tissues into a grid-type system. A grid system will help the array puncher to keep order to hundreds of blocks and slides used as donor tissues. With a grid-type box, both the donor slide and block are kept together. When punching an array, try to develop a system of consistency. If you choose to use slide boxes, keep them separate so not to confuse which box you are punching and which you have already punched. The grid paper will be the array map. Mark the grid paper each time the slide and block is pulled and punched. This will minimize mistakes like double punching or skipping a specimen. Some protocols require a random sampling of donor tissues to get a true representation of donor blocks. To do this, three or four array blocks are constructed from the same grid paper. A fresh H&E is made from the specimen blocks. The positive areas are marked with an indelible pin. With the corresponding block and slide placed together in the grid box, according to the grid paper layout, you are ready to begin punching. The array or recipient block begins with a blank paraffin block. Use embedding type paraffin only, not infiltrating paraffin. The chemical makeup of embedding paraffin is harder and makes for easy sectioning. Place the array block into the array block holder. This reciprocal has two screws that are used to tightening the array block down while punching. Using the micrometer adjustment guides, maneuver the needle to the location you desire to begin punching. It is best to begin punching at either the top or bottom left corner. The adjustment knobs can only travel two-thirds of the way across the block. You have to flip the block to punch the last third, which I will explain later. Zero the guide counter before punching. The distance between punches can be 0.6 millimeter to 1 millimeter apart. Switch the turret to the recipient needle, which is the smaller needle. Before punching, pull the stylet out of the needle. This will allow the paraffin to fill the needle. Punch the recipient block with an even steady motion. Lift up gently, then push the stylet down carefully to extract the paraffin. Now switch the turret to the larger needle to punch the donor tissues. I am using a location marker to start. This helps the slide reader to maneuver around the array slide without confusion. There are numerous tissue dyes on the market. Lung is the best to dye because of its sponge-like characteristic. Set the donor block bridge on the arrayer. 
Since the depth stop only works with the array or recipient block, you will need to take care not to punch too deep or you will damage the donor needle. To insert a punch, place the donor needle just above the hole in the array block. Slowly and carefully push the core out of the needle. This may take some practice since it deals a lot with hand-eye coordination. To punch the next hole, move the micrometer adjustment guide 0.6 or 1 millimeter to the right. If you are off on the guide by 0.001 in either direction, it won't visually affect the array outcome. Move the turret to the recipient needle and again lift the stylet rod. Punch the hole for the first donor tissue. Remember to eject the paraffin or you'll start to get a buildup of paraffin in the recipient needle. Don't forget to mark the grid paper each time a block is pulled. Match the block and slide so you punch the proper location in the donor block. It takes anywhere from an hour to two hours to punch 100 specimens, so remember to take a break and focus your eyes on something further away. Place your wrist on the arrayer's base plate, then rock your fingers slowly to insert a punch. This will steady your hand and give you control when punching. Once you reach the end of a row, move the micrometer guide to begin another row. Use the same interval distance you began with. The punches in this array are all one millimeter apart. You have to stop in the middle of punching a group for any reason. Always double check yourself. Make sure you are on the right row and the right specimen. This is where most mistakes occur. When you have completed a group, this is the best time to flip the block. If you try to flip the block in the middle of a group, it will be very hard to match the rows. Uneven rows will confuse the slide reader. Match the needle up to the nearest punch to where you begin the next group.
Zero the micrometer gauge. Try to separate the groups with at least one millimeter gap. You don't have to begin with a location marker in the second group, but it is nice for the slide reader's quick reference. It takes on an average 50 punches to develop a technique or routine for punching, so make sure your first array is a practice array. I use plastic slide boxes to dispose of paraffin cores. This keeps from having paraffin scattered around my work area. It is also easier than reaching for a trash can after every punch. This is a block with 1,000 specimens at 0.6 millimeter apart. Note the colored location markers. If you try to cut an array at this point, the punches will either slip deeper into the block or fall out completely. The paraffin needs to be melted slightly to stick the punches to the paraffin. Place the array block on a glass slide, punch side down, in an oven warmed to 37 degrees Celsius for around 15 minutes. If it is too hot, you could end up with this. After 15 minutes, remove the block and slide from the oven and press them together gently. This is what sets the punches. If you press too much, the punches will begin to spread out and make the rows warped and uneven. Place the block and slide together on a piece of ice. Don't separate them until the block is cool. If you try to punch the 2 mm needle using the same method as the 0.6 mm needle, the paraffin will crumble around the punch hole. To eliminate this problem, place the recipient block into a water bath or oven at 37 to 40 degrees Celsius for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. This softens the paraffin so the block can be punched. Hopefully you've already moved the micrometer guide to the number one punch position beforehand. Working quickly, lock the block down and begin punching. Punches are three millimeter apart from each other. Punch as many holes as you can at a time. Six to ten holes is about max before the paraffin cools. Remember to stop punching when you've reached the limit to your micrometer gauge. You can punch the last third of the block later. Place the block again in a water bath to soften. Because 
the punches are considerably larger than the 0.6 millimeter needle, it's a lot easier to line the punches. A large paraffin block can have up to 60 punches without risk to damage. Flip the block once you have punched the first two-thirds. Align the needle and warm the block again. Now that all the holes are punched, you can begin to fill with donor tissues. I am placing a 0.6 millimeter location marker at the number one position before I begin. Remember to work from your grid paper to keep order to the array. When punching donor tissues, you will notice some resistance because of the size of the needle and the density of the tissue being punched. This is normal. Because there is not a depth stop for punching donor tissues, the length may be longer than the array holes. Donor cores need to be trimmed to size. Remove the core from the donor needle and lay it next to a blank paraffin core punch. Trim the donor core, matching it to the length of the recipient core. To insert a punch, set the donor core on top of the hole with a pair of forceps. Then with the other end of the forceps, the flat side, press the core into the hole slowly. If you use the needle to insert the punch like the 0.6 millimeter needle, you will find that the 2 millimeter punch is not as flexible. If you are off center even slightly, the punch will scrape the side of the hole damaging it. Preparing the 2 mm array block for section is the same as this 0.6 mm block. 
Place it in a 37 to 40 degree Celsius oven for approximately 15 minutes. Then press together and cool on an ice block. The sectioning aid system from Instrumentics and Company is designed for those who have a difficult time sectioning an array block using the standard micronomy method. Trim an array block to get a smooth and flat surface. Clean off the blade area and either move the blade to a fresh spot or replace the blade with a new one. A slightly dull blade can cause tearing of tissue samples. Once the blade and block are matched, which may take a couple of trims, you are then ready to apply the tape to the block. To get the tape to stick to the block, remove the tape's plastic coating. Stick the tape to the block, trying not to get any air bubbles between the two. Use the roller to flatten out the surface. Grab the tape with a pair of forceps and with one clean motion, make a section. This may take some practice getting used to. The sectioning aid equipment comes with special slides. Remove the protective plastic from the slide to expose the adhesive coating. The trick here is to have no air bubbles between the slide and the tape. Any air bubbles will make the sections lift off the slide, leaving empty areas where punches should be. You can even try to pop air bubbles if they are large. Just remember, you might damage tissue doing this, so be careful. Set the slides in the ultraviolet lamp for approximately 30 seconds to one minute. This cures the adhesive sticking the sections to the slide. Before removing the tape, place the slides in the TPC solvent for 30 seconds. This oily chemical does help lift the tape off the slide easier. Use protective gloves for this procedure. If you are an experienced micronomy technician, you will want to section the array manually. There are many advantages to this technique. Depending on your micronomy experience, sections can be cleaner and crisper than the tape method. There are many factors that can hinder clean micronomy. 
The more punches in the array, the quality of processing and types of tissue involved all play a role in how easy an array is sectioned. Once I did an array that had 50 head and neck cancers, 50 prostate cancers, and 50 brain cancers. This unusual group of tissue demanded a different method of sectioning. I found that soaking the block on ice for a few minutes, then wiping a kin wipe on the brain part of the array block helped to produce nice sections. Of course, if all else fails and not to deplete the array block, you can go back to the sectioning aid system. Which technique you choose depends on your abilities. There is a different quality between the two. If you choose the sectioning aid system, you will want to use a non-alcoholic eosin to minimize background staining when doing an H&E. When comparing both punch methods, it is apparent that the standard micronomy is a better way to go. The sections are cleaner and cells are more defined. The sectioning aid punch is generally thicker and chattered. To optimize the quality in the sectioning aid system, always use a fresh blade after every three or four sections. If you don't, there is a characteristic that often happens with dull blades using the tape system. The tissue develops a smile-like tear. This is less apparent with a fresh blade. I hope this video has helped answer your questions on how to use the tissue arrayer. With little practice and patience, you can create beautiful tissue arrays with hundreds of specimens.